Look, I do still love you, but I'm done. It's over. I've given you so many chances and it's just not working out. You have broken my heart. I am not going to Ban Island, but you are. Have you ever loved a bag or something about a bag? So you've bought it and then it just doesn't work out. I'm pretty sure that's happened to most of us. And that's what this video is about. So stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage, where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Today's video is in collaboration with fellow YouTuber Dee Dee Bean. I think a lot of you will already be familiar with Dee Dee, and she and I have quite a bit in common. We both have YouTube channels about handbags, we have kind of similar collections too. We have large collections and quite a variety. So we have luxury brands, we have contemporary brands, we like a lot of things. And Dee Dee is also in Texas and I used to be in Texas. So we've got that going for us too. And I was chatting with Dee Dee recently. I don't even remember what it was about. Something about handbags and I told her that there was this particular bag or a color or style or something that I banned, that I love it, but that I can't buy because I've tried it before and it just doesn't work for me. So I've learned a lesson. And she was like, well, that would be a great idea for a video. And I thought, yeah, it would. Why didn't I think of that? So we're collaborating here today. And when you're done watching my video, I will have her link in my description box below so you can go check that out. And while you're down there, I will also have the link for the planner pages that I designed and which are now available on my website, autumnbeckminute.com. And that's where you can track your collection, your handbag collection or your small goods collection. So there are pages and there's more than what I'm showing you, but let me just show you this as an example. This is the front and the back of the handbag tracker page where you can list everything important about your handbag, as well as a few other notes and track prices and whether you've sold the bag and notes on that. In fact, that really comes in handy for what we're talking about today, which is bags that we still love, but have discovered don't work for us. So the way I'm picturing this is that I'm not on Ban Island. I'm free to buy whatever I want. However, there are bags that I have put on my ban list. So these bags are on Ban Island. I can see them, they're over there, I'm waving at them, I still love you, I'm sending little love notes back and forth in the glass bottles, you know, but we're, we're not, we're staying away from each other is the point. Now, as I was listing out all the things I've banned, I actually discovered that I have three categories of this. So one are things that are banned, I will not buy them. Another category is things I've, I've pretty much banned but I haven't completely closed the door on the relationship. So there is a chance that something could still get through and end up in this room. And the third is things that I probably should ban but haven't yet. So let's go through this. And as you're listening, think about what you've banned from your collection or maybe what you think you should ban but you haven't been able to bring yourself to break up yet. So first, in the completely banned category, they are on the island. Each of these is also broken into three categories. There is colors, materials, and styles of bags. So for colors, this is probably the easiest thing for me to ban, and that is warm colors. So your reds, oranges, yellows. Those just don't work for me. I'm not drawn to them, so that's pretty easy for me to ban them. Even though every once in a while there is something I really like. For example, I have this red bag from Henry's Leather Goods. I'll have them linked below too. I don't think this particular one is available, but they may have some other bags in this color if you like it. Or this bag in some other colors if you like that. This is a great bag. It's a great red. Red is not usually my color, but this one works for me. What I do tend to be drawn to, a color I love, but that I've had in my collection before and I just don't reach for it is burgundy. I've had a couple of burgundy bags. I still, when I'm scrolling through looking at bags, I'm drawn to them. I want burgundy, but I stop myself because I know it doesn't work for me. So burgundy 
is on Ban Island. Also another exception is light pink because I've been looking for the right light pink bag and people keep asking me about this one. I did a video on it but it's a Brandon Blackwood ESR tote which stands for End Systemic Racism and it's a little boxy bag like that. So this kind of pink works for me but not a bunch of it like one or two bags that's it. And bright colors for the most part aren't going to work for me. I've tried some bright colors before and I just don't wear them. Darker colors have always been my thing. Believe it or not, fall colors, autumn, fall, that's what works best for me for my whole life. That's always been true. Now in terms of materials, there are two that I tend to avoid. One is patent leather. And you know what? That might change being up in Oregon now. When I was in Texas, my big reason for that was the heat because the patent being in that heat would sometimes get sticky or that would help with color transfer. The patent would warm up and that makes it more likely for something to stick to it. But now that I'm up here, that's not a problem anymore, most of the year anyway. So I may have to rethink that one. The other is epi leather, and really neither of these should be in the completely banned category. They should be in the next one. Because epi, I don't like epi in some situations, I do like it in others. Pretend this was later in the video. Styles of bags, camera bags, I really like and I have learned that they don't work for me. I don't like the look of them on me. A lot of that just has to do with they are rectangular and they have these straight edges everywhere and so when they're off a little bit when they're sitting on you a little crooked i just don't like that also boxy structured bags like a camera bag but also like a petite mal for example not that i have the tens of thousands of dollars to get a petite mal but you know what i mean <laughs> really boxy bags the reason for that is because when i'm walking if it's a bag that's crossbody for example it bounces when I walk and I don't like bags that bounce on me or chains that bounce even. I just don't like the feel of it. So those are out, but I do love the look of camera bags and boxy structured bags. Also this will or won't surprise some of you, backpacks. I've never been a fan of backpacks as handbags, but lately I guess I've just seen them often enough over all these years that they've grown on me a little bit, especially the little mini backpacks. I'm not going to get one, but I do kind of like the idea of just holding it top handle or wearing it crossbody. I would never wear it on my back or on my shoulder. That's just me, but I'm not gonna get one. That's on the island. Now the colors, materials, and bags that are semi-banned. So these bags are on the island, but they've got their toes in the water. They're thinking about swimming over to the mainland where I am. I'm trying to keep them at bay, but a few may slip through every now and then. Colors, grays. I love gray bags. For some reason, when I've had them in my collection, I don't wear them. I don't know why. I think part of it has to do with I like to match my bags with my shoes and I haven't had gray shoes, but I think I need to get over that because I really like gray bags. And I've been thinking lately about adding one. Let me show you this Teddy Blake bag. This, by the way, I got off Etsy. It just arrived today. It's really cute, but I think they're sold out, so I can't link it, but I'll link the shop below in case they do have some. Teddy Blake bag. This is the Gigi. This is 11 inch, and I mentioned in another video that I wish I'd gotten the 13 inch, so I've been thinking about getting one of these in. They have a light gray. They also have a light pink, but then they also have a dark green that I really like, so I haven't bought one yet because I'm not sure but I've been carrying this bag and really enjoying it. So I'm thinking of buying one. I'll have these linked below in case you're interested. The other semi-band color is blue bags. I have this blue bag, which also happens to be Teddy Blake. This is the Kiara. It's one of the only blue bags that I have and I love blue and I love blue bags. The problem here is that I tend to wear blue jeans. Anytime I go to pick up a blue bag and then I look in the mirror with my blue jeans, I feel like it clashes which is probably silly, it probably doesn't really, but I steer away from them and I go for a different bag instead. So I have learned to stop getting blue bags, but they still really catch my eye because I love blue. As far as materials, I have to be more careful being in Oregon since it rains a lot here about what materials I get bags in. I can still wear a bag in any material, even an all Vachetta bag like the Nomad Noe that I have, which if it even looks like it's going to rain is going to ruin the bag, right? So I can still wear those different materials. I have, I just have to be 
careful because of the weather. I can wear them less often now than I used to be able to. So I just have to be more conscious when I'm interested in a bag like that. I saw on the Real Rail recently a Tory Burch Lee Radziwill bag. That's what this is, but this one was a different material. It was a canvas with leather trim. The one I just showed you was eel, and I bought that one brand new for about $1,100, which is about what the Tory Burch Lee Radziwill bags cost. This one though that was on the real reel was only 200 something dollars. Incredible, incredible bargain, and I almost bought it but I decided not to because it's canvas. If I had still been living in Texas, I would have bought it in a second. In terms of styles of bags that I haven't completely banned, but I mostly have, the Longchamp Le Pliage, that's only because I have several of them now and I tend to carry other bags instead, so I really don't need to be adding more of them. The Coach Rogue, I love the look of that bag. I always wanna get one when I see one. I have one on my wish list right now. I actually bought one recently and then the sale got canceled for some reason. It was somebody on Poshmark. But I have tried the Rogue twice in the 25 centimeter size and I just haven't liked it once I have it in person and put it on me. The one I'm interested in is the 20 centimeter size. I feel like maybe the smaller size would work better for me. I don't know, I haven't seen one in person yet. I don't know, we'll see. I may try that one if I can find the right one at the right price, like this one was, and then nobody cancels it. Another thing that prevents me from wearing bags sometimes, just because it's kind of fussy, even though I like the look of it, is when you have like a bag with a zipper and there's a little flap over it with a clasp. I have a few bags like that in my collection and I've had a few that I let go. When I have lots of bags to choose from and I tend to want something that's more carefree, I tend not to choose the ones that are more fussy. So I'm more careful about that when I'm chopping for those bags. But there's one that I was just looking at the other day. Now I want it and it has that, so who knows? And then another sort of bag style that I have stopped buying, I had stopped buying it completely, but I've purchased a few <laughs> lately and I'll show them to you, is dupes that are, they don't have brand names, but they look identical to another bag that's more expensive. So for example, this one. This one's also a bright color. I showed you guys this recently. This is not Fendi. This is by a brand called Tiffany and & Fred, and they are my problem right now. They have some really cute bags that look like very expensive bags, but they're not branded. And since I bought this one, and the quality of this particular one is wonderful, so much better than I was expecting, and it's only, I think this one was about $130. The bags that I've seen from them range from maybe 100 to 200. I love this one so much that I bought another one, which is this one. And both of these I got, I already have real Fendi peekaboos, but both of these are different ones that for me, these styles I wouldn't spend luxury price tags on, but they're fun. Like the green one I don't plan to carry, I just like the look of it and it's gonna sit on my shelf. This one I carried the other day, and it's pretty good. It has the whip stitching on the edge. No, I think I put it away. It has a crossbody strap that has the whip stitching on both sides of it, which is really pretty, and then it has a regular crossbody strap. I don't think this one's available anymore, but it's also Tiffany and Fred. Like, for this price, it's kind of hard to resist. And then I bought two other ones, and I think maybe I'm done. One of them was this one in a green, and when I got it in person, I didn't like it. I didn't like the material as much, and the size was smaller than I was expecting. I just didn't like the style of it. If it had been bigger, I may have liked it better. And then the other one is this one. And I saw Dawn and Winnie, I will link their videos below, they did a collaboration where they unboxed Tiffany and Fred bags and Dawn unboxed one in this style but a different color. And hers looked so nice and she was kind of raving about it. I've been wanting to try this style for a while now, but I wanted one that had a really nice smushy leather. And that's what this is. So I got this today and really love it. So I'm keeping this one and maybe I'll get this in maybe like a black or maybe another color. I'm not sure yet. If you're interested in any of these, I'll put the link below too. And I'm a little bit off track. I know this. So let's move on. So the last of the three categories are things that I have not banned, but I probably should. And I don't have any materials on this list, but I do have colors and bag styles. So the colors are taupe and browns. Now taupe, I've been really into taupe 
for the last, I don't know, year or so, and I keep buying taupe bags, and I have too many of them now. Or at least, maybe not too many, but I have enough that I feel like, okay, that's enough taupe. So I'm, I've been consciously backing off of that, but it's not banned. And then browns, that one's tricky because I think I have more brown bags than anything else in my collection, but the reason for that is because I love brown bags. That's what I gravitate toward the most. Whatever I have on, a brown bag usually goes with it. And I also just love the look of brown leather. It feels natural to me, and that is a look that I really like. So I don't think I'll ban browns. I had backed off from browns for a while. Some of you may remember I was consciously adding color into my collection. And now I'm at a point where I can still add color, but I'm okay with more brown too, because I know that it really works for me. And then the other thing I'm backing off of, or thinking about backing off of is tote bags. The reason for that is being in Oregon and working from home, I don't go out that much. And when I do, I usually just take a little crossbody bag or a little top handle bag. I don't need a tote very much anymore. When I was a teacher and going into work every day and carrying all kinds of stuff with me, I needed a tote every day. And I just have a different lifestyle now that doesn't require traveling back and forth with so much stuff. But I still love tote bags, so I'm drawn to them all the time. There are so many amazing tote bags. I just have to be conscious of not buying every one I want, because then they just sit here and collect dust. So these are the great loves of my life that I have had to part ways with. What about you? What bags, colors, materials, styles, whatever, have you had to ban? Because even though you really love them, they just haven't worked for you. Let me know in the comment section below. And please remember to check out whatever it is I might have linked in the description box, including my website where you can pick up my My Handbag Collection organizer pages to track your bag collection. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.